This is Jonathan Agar, fifth for Pro Boxing fans. We're here in Camden Boxing Club. A couple of weeks ago, until another boxer show on Sky Sports, June 11th, Richard Riatbor in a rescheduled clash with Fabio Turchi, joined by Sky Sports head of boxing development, Adam Smith. Adam, how you doing? I'm just trying to hear you over the music in here. It's fantastic. It's a great atmosphere. What a fantastic gym, the Camden Boxing Club. We're just talking. It's not far from where sort of we grew up in, in North London. It's nice to be back in these parts. And yeah, June the 11th is a wonderful wonderful show at Wembley. Really excited that Richard Riakpour finally has that big fight with Fabio Turchi. It's a really good test for the midnight train. We can't wait for, for that one as he closes in on uh, world title tilts at some point down the line. Richard has um, you know, really crossed over, I think, into the casual audience. You know, people at Sky stop me, they ask me about Richard. He looks good. He's got that incredible story, the background. He's got the, the affinity, the uh, association now with Crystal Palace. Um, and he he can fight and he can punch and he's um, people like him so really excited about Richard and, and Turchi and what a card as well I don't know what to start on the Chris Congo fight with uh, Formella which is a really good test for Chris love that fight with Zach Shelley and Jermaine Brown I think that's a 50-50 a Zach just here so maybe we'll say it's 60-40 in his favour or, or maybe he'd like to see himself as the underdog I think that's a great fight uh, Lauren Price as well turning professional um, I've seen uh, Ebony here as well today Jimmy TK everybody so it's like it's going to be a, a great night at Wembley um, that's become their home really and uh, we had a really good uh, a night a few weeks ago there with um, when Richard fought uh, Dion Juma at short notice that was great and now we're going to go again and uh, Lauren Price turning professional and I think that's uh, that's an event you don't want to miss because I think Lauren's going to become a an exceptional star uh, not just for the women but in boxing full stop in boxing period um, I mean so many people People. I've seen her a great deal, but so many people around the business say that she is the greatest female they've ever seen. So that's that's high praise when you're looking at the likes of the legendary Katie Taylor and and the legendary Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields and all of the, the great women fighters, the Amanda Serranos, the Tasha Jonas's, the, the Terry Harpers. But people are saying that Lauren is, uh, is, is exceptional. And, you know, if you look at her sporting background, and she's so ambitious that um, I think that's going to be some journey. So to add to that, now Lauren's debut, what a great night it should be on June the 11th. And what a great June it should be. Just week after week of fantastic action on Sky Sports. Is this arguably be Richard Riappel's toughest test to date? 100% Dion Juma would have argued before the fight but uh, I think Richard always had that slight advantage over Dion being the naturally sort of lighter guy and I think that um, Dion boxed well that night but obviously Richard does have huge power I think this is, I think Fabio Turchi is a really good fight for him and uh, I've been asked already if I think the world title is next for Riappel let's not get ahead of ourselves, I said to Richard after the Dion Juma fight, I said I think I'd like to have you to have a couple more but before we start talking about world title uh, challenges because I think that you know he's, he's still learning he's still quite raw at times Richard you know he's betting in with Angel Fernandez they had that time over the pandemic but now is the chance get that ring action and he's got it getting some momentum I'd like to see how he does with Fabio Turchi no guarantee here this is a tough fight um, you know Fabio can teach him a lesson a bit he's very experienced but if Richard can deal with him and deal with him well then you know that's a that's a big plus as he looks toward world honours. But I think this is his toughest test, yes. Just talk to me about Vidal Roily. Uh, you talk about Richard Riappel having crossover appeal. Vidal Roily certainly does in his platform. What can we expect from him, do you think, over the year? He's very sort of young in his career, but because of his profile and platform, I think people want to rush him. But yeah, what's, do you think, his plans? What do we love in boxing and what do we love in social media? We love stories. And Vidal Riley's a great story, isn't he? I mean, he was, he's a fantastic talker. He can really fight. He's had that experience in the YouTube, social media, KSI world. He's got a fantastic following. Why wouldn't we want to, you know, mix it with Vidal? He's part of Sky. He's part of Boxer. He's going to be fantastic watching his journey. So um, he'll, he'll want to take it at his own pace. He's in a very competitive division, um, but he'll also want to uh, test himself against the very best, and he believes he can. And I think he's got real talent. And he's an old-fashioned throwback of a fighter, his style as well. So I'm really excited that Vidal is, uh, is making noise. It's going to bring numbers, but he could bring titles as well. He could be better than people think.
I spoke to Amir Khan uh, last week after he announced his retirement and I asked him who does he think the next pay-per-view star is. You know, over the last few years we've seen David Hay and Tony Belly retire, Kel Brook, Amir Khan. It seems like we're missing that, that big name. Possibly Conor Ben. Yeah, of course. Conor Ben is... Uh is, is great. He's got the um, the name. He's got the personality. He's got the ambition, uh, the fighting style. Love Conor Ben, and um, you know, with Eddie and Dazone, he'll get the global fight. So, look, Conor Ben is uh, is carving his niche with our competition. But we obviously keep a, a close eye on Conor. Uh, he was with us for a long time. He's a fantastic talent. More than just a talent now, he's a great fighter. Let's see how uh, Conor evolves over the next two or three years. Um, you know, let's see how Chris Eubank Jr. evolves. He's a bit older, obviously, but uh, I think the idea was always that he could try and become that box office star. Maybe it's one of the Olympians we've just signed up, one of the many talented Olympians, the five of them, which we're delighted to all uh, have under our wing now. Maybe it's Adam Azim, who's not an Olympian. You know, there's a lot of potential out there, but that's going to take time. That's going to take two or three years to build them into, you know, the, uh, the stars and we did that with Ricky Hatton, we did that with Anthony Joshua, we did it with, with others. Amir Khan came to us having had a big terrestrial background uh, before. His first fight on box office was the Bredis Prescott one, and we had to rebuild and come again. And he became world champion 11 months later against Andreas Kotelnik. Uh, Amir was great fun to work with, so was Kel. Um, there'll be box office fights and there'll be box office stars. Don't forget Dillian as well. Dillian we had for a, a few years as well, providing great uh, box office attraction. Uh, we hope to land the AJ Usyk fight. We've had Khan Brook this year. But we also want to do a lot of big nights on Sky Sports. Very important for us to give our customers, our Sky Sports customers, real quality, real value. You look at June. We've got Cambosis and Haney. We've got this, as we've talked about on June the 11th, React Bor and Turchi, and a great card in London. Then we go, we've got New York with Batebi Evan and Joe Smith the week after. And then we're in Coventry for all the new young stars, the ones that haven't appeared maybe on the others. And that Lauren obviously is, is debuting in, uh, in London. But Karras is debuting in Coventry. We've got Dylan Schema and Corey Gibbs, the tournament winners. Good to our word. They didn't just win the 40K, but they're going to fight on Sky. Let's see how their journeys unfold. And Adam Azim is going to be great as well. Sam Eginson already on, on the bill. And there's some great fights that night too. But it's a real opportunity for us to get the young guns out there, the prime talent. So uh, I don't think we uh, we know exactly who's going to be you know, a box office star in the future. Ben Whitaker will keep telling us it's him. And maybe it will be. But um, listen, it's open audition time. Who's out there that wants to grab this possibility, this opportunity and become a star? Ben and I have gone around doing the Olympic business. We've got our quality now. It's open. The field is open. Do you know who I think could become a star? Who I think is going to transcend boxing? I sat next to her the other night at the Boxing Writers' Dinner, and that's Caroline Dubois. Got a soft spot for Caroline. I think Caroline could be a phenomenal sporting personality in this country. Her background's incredible. Her talent's unbelievable. She's a lovely young lady. Don't know, I've got a feeling. She tells me it could be her youngest brother, who's about 10 at the moment, Solomon. She says, he's the one. Daniel says it's Caroline. I mean, can they keep coming, these Dubois talent? It's brilliant. I don't know. It's open. Adam Azim, could it be him? Could it be someone we're not thinking about? A Joe Pigford, a Brad Ray, an Ebony Jones, a Georgia O'Connor. Who knows? It's out there. Dylan Chima, look what he did. Corey Gibbs. Opportunity knocks. Grassroots tournament shows. A wide but select stable. As in wide, I mean different characters, different levels, different backgrounds, opportunities. What a stable that's being grown by Ben Shalom. And credit to him for doing it on the female and the male side. It's great. And I like to see... Fraser Clark is like the captain. Tasha Jonas is the captain, mentoring them through. We haven't even mentioned Savannah Marshall. I mean, I think we've done all right in a year. Now, you mentioned Dillian White. We understand, well, you know, he was working on a sort of a free agent basis with Eddie Hearn and Matcham, but is there any been any talks behind the scenes about him possibly joining Sky? 
There's always talks. Uh, Dillian, we've got a lot of affection for. We have a very, very good relationship with him and his team. It didn't work out for him, as we know, at Wembley. Um, he's still a, a massive attraction in the heavyweight division. Of course he is. He could fight when one of a number of fighters. I mean, I'm sure he'll want to try and get the winner or, or loser of AJ Usyk. I'm sure he'll want to fight maybe Joe Parker again. How about Deontay Wilder? What a great fight that is. Deontay, Deontay saying he wants to come back into the fold. Uh, I'm very close to Shelley Finkel, Deontay's manager. So, look, that'll be a great fight, Wilder and White. Um, there's so many out there. You look at Andy Ruiz and Joe Joyce and just, just terrific talent in the heavyweight division we've got Daniel as I mentioned Daniel he's got his big moment um, against Trevor Bryan so you know who's going to come through it all uh, Fraser Clark okay it's embryonic as a pro but he's so experienced as an amateur that we can move him quickly I think there's so much talent out there that I think Dillian has got great opportunities I know he's taking a bit of a rest um, but he'll be training again in Portugal soon he'll be back on the horse and that's what Dillian White's all about he's never ducked a challenge I'd like to see Wilder White, I think. Well, a lot of us definitely would. Um, Top-ranked shows coming up. Cambosis Haney, uh, you've got Baturbiev Smith. On Cambosis Haney, is there, uh, are we aware of what time that's going to be for UK fans? I'm trying to work it out myself. I think that it's the early hours uh, of the morning, as usual, for the big fights from America, uh, that it'll be Australia next day in the sort of lunchtime time. I think it's meant for a peak American audience. That's what I'm being told. So, um, Matt Macklin and I better find out pretty quickly because we're commentating on it. So, uh, I think it is uh, the early hours of the morning from for UK time. Whatever time it is, it's a fight not to miss. George Cambosis, we had a, a great, great lot of fun with him and his team in the bubble uh, when he fought Lee Selby. Uh, great character. What a fighter he's, uh, he's become and proving himself against Diafimo Lopez and just wonderful. I think um, it's going to be an amazing occasion, the event in Melbourne. And uh, look, I, I bumped into Devin Haney at the, uh, the airport the other day in New York before he was traveling out. Uh, he's up for it. He's ready to uh, try and shut Cambosis up. It's a fantastic fight. And so is one two weeks later with Batebiev and Joe Smith. Um, they bookend two live fight nights, you know, 7 to 11 on Sky Sports in London and in Coventry. It's, uh, it's a busy June. I'm not sure my family are too happy. And uh, possibly a better question for Eddie Hearn, but we are still waiting for this Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk rematch. July 23rd was the reported date. From your understanding, why has there not been an announcement yet? I think, look, business takes a long time, contracts take a long time. Um, I think it's close, it's very close. I think if it goes July 23rd, like I'm hearing, we have to have an announcement within the coming days. So, um, looking forward to that. Looking forward to hopefully finishing our you know, contractual business as well. I've always said to you, to everybody, that I am 100% confident, if you can be 100% confident about anything in boxing, so maybe readjust that to 99. I'm not 1,000% like Johnny, but maybe 99. But AJ will stay on Sky. Um, I've never been in any doubt. Um, he loves us. We love him. I think we're good for each other, and um, he's part of our business. So I think uh, we started with him in um, 2013 when he signed professionally. Um, I want to finish the career with, uh, with Anthony Joshua. Um, hopefully that'll be another three or four years like he wants. Um, but he's got to take care of business first with Alexander Rusik. So I'm like you. I'm waiting for a green light. Um, I speak to Freddie every day. Uh, I'm sure he's waiting as well. I think things are imminent. So um, I don't think we'll be having to do too many more of these interviews uh, unless something um, you know happens. But July 20th. 23rd, if it has to get put back, it gets put back. Obviously, with every day that goes by, it's getting closer, but July 23rd is what I'm hearing, and let's hope that we get an announcement and also about the deal, the TV deal soon. Final question. Uh, we mentioned the top-ranked shows coming up. There was a bit of surprise that the Janet Beck Dignam card didn't land on Sky Sports. It was on the top-ranked YouTube channel. Can you tell us anything about that? But we're concentrating on what we have got. Top Rank and uh, Sky have a four-year deal. Um, we didn't get the Tyson Fury fight because Tyson obviously has a deal with BT. Um, you know, sometimes we can't take everything. Sometimes they're scheduling things. Sometimes it's just a case of you know looking at our weekends so that the fight happened. 
Janibek's a fantastic fighter. Um, Danny Dignam obviously found out the, the, the difficulty of going up in class, and I'm sure Danny will come again. But uh, we've got to focus on what's on our schedule. Uh, and our schedule is looking forward to an incredible June and July. And uh, we've had the Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez fight on, uh, on Sky, which we were over there for. And now we've got the two big ones uh, in June. So uh, as I say, there are fights that we just can't take for various reasons. So, um, you know, we, we look to the ones that are in the in the schedule and we concentrate on those. And obviously we, we look at everything that happens in boxing, that whether it's on zone BT, Channel 5, whatever it ends up on. Sometimes, uh, you know, fights uh, work their ways onto different channels and um, there could be contractual reasons, there could be scheduling reasons, timing reasons, um, lots of different things, money, financial, lots of things. So, um, so yeah, but Janabek did very well and he's a, he's a big force, I think, in the middleweight division. Adam Smith, thanks for talking to Pro Boxing fans. Appreciate it. No problem.